Secretary of State Kerry today went head-to-head -head with a mostly skeptical group of U.S. senators on the Foreign Relations Committee. Kerry issued this warning about not passing the Iranian nuclear deal. If this agreement isn't passed, isn't, isn't agreed to, it doesn't meet Congress's approval, and the sanctions are gone, and Iran goes back to enriching, you can hear the human cry right now. People are going to be saying, well, what are we going to do about it? They're enriching. You'll hear the Prime Minister of Israel calling you up, time to bomb. Time to bomb. Well, our next guest was present for that hearing with the uh, Secretary. He says the deal with Iran is simply unacceptable on these terms. Sanctions relief, he says, should not precede evidence of compliance. He's Senator Rand Paul. He also wants a 14.5% cut in taxes. And at this point, he took a chainsaw to the tax code, quite literally. Take a look. Hey, I'm Rand Paul, and I'm trying to kill the tax code, all 70,000 pages of it. Joining us, one of the 16 Republicans running for president, Senator Rand Paul, member of several key committees, including Foreign Relations and Homeland Security. Senator, good to have you with us. Uh, Secretary Kerry, your impressions of him today? Well, you know, I made a point that the Ayatollah is now saying that the deal does not prevent them from having a nuclear weapon. And I thought that's precisely what the deal was supposed to do. And so I don't understand how we can have an agreement that President Obama says means one thing, John Kerry says means one thing, but the Ayatollah says it doesn't mean that at all. And that's worrisome because we're at the very beginning of the agreement. How do you think this is going to be in a year or two from now when there's allegations of whether or not they're cheating on the agreement? We haven't even started the agreement. They're already under a different impression as to what the agreement means. And the leadership of Iran already saying that uh, the Iranian policy in the Middle East is 180 degrees from that of the United States. As you say, how can this be uh, even at the beginning? Well, you wonder about the sincerity of who you're dealing with when they're immediately putting out, still calling us this arrogant nation, this great Satan, and still saying that this won't prevent them from helping their friends. Well, their friends are rebels trying to overthrow the government in Yemen. Their friends are Hezbollah, which has been attacking throughout the years Israel. So you do wonder, uh, really, are things really going to change? And if we're acknowledging they're not going to change, really, should we give up the sanctions so quickly? I, I've got to ask you, the Senator, as a distinguished member of the committee that uh, the Secretary of State appeared before, uh, as a man who has established his credentials and bona fides uh, as being very concerned uh, throughout your career about the expenditure of blood and the treasure of this, this country uh, uh, in wars that are sometimes utterly bereft of any evidence of the national interest, the president says it's either war or it's his agreement. How, how does that stack up to you? I don't think it's a, such a binary choice. I think another possibility would have been continuing with the interim agreement until we got a good agreement. They themselves, the administration, said that, that no agreement was better than a bad agreement. And I think the interim agreement would have also been a possibility that we continue on with that to show proof of compliance. But I also think that we could have released the sanctions in a stepwise or gradual way as we saw continued compliance. Because this is a question I had for Secretary Kerry today. Do you think the Iranians have, been, have shown themselves to be trustworthy or untrustworthy? And even the administration admits that historically they've shown themselves not to really obey international agreements or be trustworthy. So really you need a lever. You need something to... Uh, have that you can enforce compliance with. And I think that lever would have been continuing to have some of the sanctions and not releasing them all uh, up front. And I think that's the real problem with the agreement. Let's turn to domestic policy, if we may, Senator. And 
And the very idea that in 2015, nine years after the 2006 McCain-Kennedy comprehensive immigration reform legislation, the debate rages. And it rages in large measure because Donald Trump had the guts to, to bring it up four square and up front. Uh, but at this, at this point, we still have an unresolved border uh, security uh, commitment from our federal government, from this administration. What would be your commitment to border security, and uh, what does it represent to you? The first thing I would do is obey the law. We haven't had a president, Republican or Democrat, in recent history who has enforced the immigration law. So everybody says they're for border security. Well, I'm for electing a president who will actually enforce the law. And I think if you did, you'd find that there are laws on the, on the books that would actually say that we should have an organized process and we shouldn't have a wide open border. I've introduced legislation in the last week that says that when there's an immigration order, San Francisco can't ignore that, that it would be mandatory that they, they obey all federal orders. A good analogy is this. If you have somebody in jail in Ohio for shoplifting and they're wanted for murder in Michigan, Ohio never releases them onto the street. They always go directly into custody in Michigan. It's always happened that way. Where did we start with allowing San Francisco to say, oh, they're wanted for a federal crime and we're just going to release them into the streets? It started with President Obama because President Obama reinterpreted the rules and said, oh, these court orders are voluntary. When someone's wanted for a crime, they should be held and turned over to the other jurisdiction. And as we conclude here, I just want to point out to our audience that the senator has introduced legislation uh, to restrict funding of uh, sanctuary cities. Uh, he is uh, acting as well as speaking on the issue. Senator, always good to talk with you. We thank you so much.